Hello and welcome to Craft with Sarah. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to stick together my free layered rose paper craft project. This SVG is available from craftwithsarah.com and I'm gonna show you how to put it into Cricut Design Space, choose your colors of the roses, get everything cut out, and finally, how to stick it together. This is a beautiful paper craft project which would work really well for lots of different occasions such as birthday, Mother's Day, thank you gifts and more. Let's find out how to make it. You can download the free cutting file for this project at craftwithsarah.com forward slash free dash SVGs or follow the link in the description of this video to go straight to the download page. The download comes in a zip folder and you need to unzip this before you can upload the files into Cricut Design Space. Once you've downloaded and unzipped the folder, open up Cricut Design Space and start a new project. Go into Upload over on the left and then Upload Image. You can then either click Browse to find a file on your computer or drag and drop it in. Make sure you choose the unzipped version of your folder and then the file to select is the one which starts SVG in the file name. I'll click and drag that in and it should look like this with all of the layers one on top of the other. If yours looks different and you see the layers all next to each other individually instead, that means you've accidentally uploaded the wrong file. So if that's the case, click cancel down here and then try again and make sure you choose the one which starts SVG. Click upload and then it will appear once it's loaded in your recent uploads. Click on it to get a green border around the edge and then press add to canvas. Here's how it looks and you can see all of the layers down the right hand side. If you want to change the color of anything then you can do that really easily in design space. And if I am changing the colors of a design, I do like to mock it up on the screen before I cut it out from cardstock, just to make sure I'm happy with how it's all looking. For example, on this design, I might want to cut red and pink roses instead of the yellow ones. To do that, find one of the layers that you want to change and click it in the layers panel. I've chosen the bottom layer of the creamy yellow roses. So let's go into my color and I'll make it a light red. I would also need to change the darker shade on top. So let's make that a nice dark red. And you can see instantly how that makes the design look completely different. You could also choose to change the color of the vase, for example. So let's do that. I'll make a, let's go for an orange vase. So I've got orange on the bottom a light orange and then the darker one, I'll make a darker orange. So if you want to make any changes to the colors, go ahead and do that now. I'm just gonna undo all of that because I will be cutting mine out exactly as it was designed. To resize the design, click on it and then make sure your padlock icon here is closed. If it's open, then you can click it to close it. Now, when I resize this, for example, if I make it seven inches wide and then press enter on my keyboard, the height changes in proportion, so everything stays looking beautiful. For this design, the outlines of the roses are really quite thin, so I don't recommend going smaller than, I would say, maybe five and a half inches wide. Otherwise, I think it will just get too thin and you might end up with your cardstock tearing. This design is definitely one that looks better a little bit bigger. When you're ready to cut it out, press make it over on the top right of the screen. And this separates out all of the different colors. You can change the paper size in here and you do need to do that for every single color. You can also rotate or move things about to use up less space on your cardstock. For example, if I rotate this layer here, and I'm gonna hit the shift key on my keyboard while I do it so that I can do it 90 degrees. Then it uses up just that little bit less of my cardstock, which means I've got all of this space here, which I could leave for another project another day. Make your changes for all of the different colors. And you can also move things about. So for example, on this one, when I changed it to A4, Design Space now thinks I need a separate sheet for this 
but I'm pretty sure I can fit it on the other one. So to do that, click the three little lines and then um, three little lines, three little dots <laughs> and then move object. Click on the other mat, make sure it's the same color and press confirm. I need to move it because it's on top of that other shape at the moment. But you can see that actually does fit on there pretty nicely. So Design Space thought I needed two sheets, but actually I only need one. Don't worry that it's now showing an empty mat here. When you hit continue, it will remove any empty ones. So go ahead, get everything looking exactly as you want it to. Then press continue to connect to your Cricut machine. Follow all the on-screen instructions and get everything cut out from your cardstock. Here are my raises all cut out and I've just led the layers one on top of the other so that I can check I'm happy with all of the colours and to make sure I haven't missed anything. I'm loving how this is looking already with the pink and the cream raises but when it's all stuck together it's going to be even more special with all of the dimension from the foam. With layered designs you start at the bottom and work upwards so we need to move all of these layers out of the way. I'm going to try and keep the, them in order and in sort of groups um, based on how they'll be stuck. So let's move all of those. <laughs> that would look really pretty just by itself on a card or something um, or maybe as a gift tag. I'm going to keep them together and the roses, there we go. And then we're left with our base green bit and then the one to go on top. Now for this one, it's up to you. You could either use foam squares or you can glue it. I'm going to glue it only because these little bits around the edge, the little leafy bits, are really narrow and I wouldn't be able to get my foam in them. And I think if I was to foam it and leave them with nothing underneath, they might end up a bit fragile. Whereas with glue, I can make sure I've got my glue in those edges. The glue I like to use is called Kalal. I really like it because it doesn't bend or wrinkle the cardstock like some other glues can do. Other awesome alternatives are Barely Art Glue and Art Glitter Glue. And I put my glue into these needle tip applicator bottles that I get on Amazon. These have teeny tiny little nibs on them which is gonna make getting the glue into all of those leaves really easy. I've already turned this upside down, so I know I'm gluing the correct side. And then you see how this bottle makes really light work of those spindly little leaves. You can just dash right in them and drop off the tiniest little dot of glue, which is gonna be enough to hold that card in place and then we don't have the risk of it ripping. And then a nice amount in the middle for a really firm stick. This is gonna have all of those other layers on top of it. So we need to make sure it's stuck well to the base. And then, oh, got a little bit of dirt on there. <laughs> Let's get this stuck. So I'm lining up those leafy petal bits to know where to put it. The next layer is the solid um, pink layer. Well, yours might not be pink, but mine is pink. Um, the solid rose layer that has the vase attached, but this is the color of the roses. Let's turn it upside down, and this time I'm gonna add foam squares. So this is what my foam squares look like, although I have cut it down. It was a bigger sheet. But as they were really large foam squares, I just took a pair of scissors and I've cut them all in half so that they'll go a little bit further. So I'm not sure if you can see. There we go, they're all sort of cut down. When you're adding foam squares to layered design, you wanna make sure you've got a good amount on here because if you don't put very many, then you might find that one, it doesn't stick very well and it falls off once the weight of all of the other layers have been put on top. But also, if there are any large areas that don't have any foam squares, 
For example, if I was just to leave it like that and not do anything else, then you'll probably find that this middle bit's gonna dome downwards because there's nothing in the middle there to support it. So add a few foam squares in that middle. That's gonna give it the stability it needs to stay nice and level and look perfect once we turn it round with all those other layers on. Now I've put my foam squares there, I can peel off the stickiness from the top to reveal um, the foam stickiness. I think I said sticky too many times there. I'm gonna peel the backs off of the foam squares to reveal the stickiness underneath. There we go, I said it right that time. <laughs> Now I can line this up and what I like to do is get it in place and then just gently drop it down without pushing any pressure. And that way, if it wasn't quite in the right place, you can pick it up again really easily and reposition it without damaging anything. But I'm happy with that, so I'm gonna push down to seal all of those foam squares. The next layer is this one to create the detail on those side roses. And for all of the detailed rose layers in this design, we will be using glue. And that's because it would just be too much to get foam in these little pieces. Whereas glue is much easier. And also if we were to foam this piece, it would create a lot of shadowing in all of the gaps in the roses from the depth, which means you wouldn't see the pale pink coming through. Instead, it would just look gray, which wouldn't be as pretty. If you can, get your glue around the edge of these roses and a few little bits in the middle. If there's no glue on these roses, then they'll be incredibly fragile and likely to tear off, especially if you're putting this um, somewhere where it's gonna to be touched, for example, in the front of a greetings card. I don't wanna push down too hard because I don't want the glue to smush out the sides. Um, it does dry clear, but it will still mark it a little bit. So I think I'm happy with that one. And then we can move on to the next layer, which is the solid part of the vase. I'm going to glue the vase because otherwise I think it will get too deep with the amount of roses we've got left to do. So this one will be easier. There's no teeny tiny little edges. So just whiz that glue around. And then Stick it on top, there. And then the next one is the detailed part of the vase with those swirls, which is another glue layer. The top bit's easy, <laughs> it's nice and solid. Um, this bit's a bit more tricky, but these needle tip bottles do a fabulous job. I'm try and get in some of these swirls. Right, let's stick this down. I smudged my glue out a little bit there. Can you see? Hopefully that won't notice when it's all dried. It's only a teeny tiny bit. I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> okay, next is my yellow roses and we'll start with the solid piece which will be a foam layer and this is where these roses really start looking extra special as they start to pop out from everything in the background make sure you've got it the right way around it will line up perfectly with the edges of the purple underneath. Or again, whatever color you've done it from, yours might not be purple. And then the next one is, I'm confusing myself. It's this one, which is the outline of these flowers. So turn it upside down 
And this is a glue layer. Once again, these middle bits nice and easy. Outer bits, not so much. Oh no. <laughs> I thought that was going to take me ages to get it lined up, but it wasn't that bad in the end. There. Two layers left. We've got our solid roses to go on there. And this will be a foam layer. lines up with the solid pieces the solid shapes on that layer below so you know when you've got it the right way round and then finally the hardest layer leave the hardest to last is this one which is the two outlines of those front flowers this is absolutely going to be a glue layer uh, <laughs> and this might take me some time Be careful when picking it up not to cover your fingers in glue. And I bet I've got this round the wrong way. Let's see. Oh no, I haven't. Amazing. Okay, so I'm gonna carefully place that. Oh no, I have got it round the wrong way. Ah! Is it? Yes. <laughs> oh dear. There, that's the right way. So it lines up. Okay. Luckily, that hasn't actually damaged it. I've not got any glue anywhere it shouldn't be. I can just tap that down. And there we go, our wonderful vase of roses is all finished. So I'm gonna wait for that glue to dry before I do anything else. But I'm really happy with how this has turned out. I hope you enjoyed this video on how to make my layered vase of roses paper craft projects. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel for loads more Cricut crafts and free SVGs. Thank you for watching. Bye.